This video discusses the calculation of interest capitalization. So let's start with why we capitalize interest. Um, you go back to the basic concept behind what costs get included when you capitalize for a building, say, or for any piece of equipment. If you remember the general principle is you capitalize everything or all the costs that are necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use. So if the asset happens to be a building that's constructed, interest is part of the cost, at least the interest during construction, is part of the cost that's necessary to get it ready for its intended use. Thus, uh, US GAAP allows us to capitalize interest as part of that process. So let's talk about how to calculate um, interest, how much interest we do capitalize. And one of the key concepts here is avoidable interest. And what that essentially means is that we're calculating the interest we would not have had to pay if we'd never entered into this project. Okay. So let's read our little scenario here. Venacorp began constructing a new office building in early 20X1, for which it took out a construction loan of $2 million on January 1. On January 31, it spent $1.2 million to purchase land and prepare the site, and then it gives us several other construction-related payments here and gives us the dates on which those payments were made. And then it says that the other debt that Venacorp has is listed below here. And it asks us to compute how much interest Venacorp should capitalize in 20X1, if any. Okay, so as long as they're in the construction process and haven't completed construction, we can capitalize interest. So the first thing we want to do is calculate our weighted average expenditures. And what, what does that mean? That means the amount we actually spent and how long those spendings, if you will, were outstanding during the year. So it's essentially saying, it, when I spent this money, how many months would I have had to pay interest on the amount I spent? So it'd be from the whatever date I spent it through the end of the year. So on January 31, we spent 1.2 million. But notice it's not for the building, it's for the land and preparing the site to build the building. So can we capitalize that? The rules say yes, we can. So we're gonna put the 1.2 million in here, make sure I got enough zeros there, yep. And the number of months outstanding, do watch out for this date. If it's the last day of the month, you're not gonna count January. So that means it was outstanding from essentially February all the way through the end of the year. So it was 11 twelfths of the year. And I put a formula in here that just multiplies the amount spent times the fraction of months outstanding, and that gives us our weighted average expenditures, typical one. Okay, so the next time we spent money for this construction project was another 500,000 on March 1st. So here we enter our 500,000, and we are gonna count March since it was at the beginning of the month we spent this money, so March all the way through the end of December is 10 months out of 12, 10 twelfths, and our computer is obviously is going to reduce that fraction to 5 6 but it's the same thing as 10 twelfths. Okay, so for April 1st, we spent another 700,000. So let's enter that in. And if we spent it April 1st, April through the end of the year would be 9 twelfths. Okay. Uh, sometimes I have to count on my fingers to make sure I'm getting the number of months right. And then on July 31st, we spent another 600,000. And let's see, we'd start with August there. So August through the end of the year, August, September, October, November, December, that would be five twelfths. And then finally, we spent an amount on November 1st, 1.1 million. And that was outstanding only November and December. So that one would be two twelfths. All right. So our total weighted average expenditures for the year, just over $2 million. Okay, so this is the amount weighted that if we hadn't spent it, we could have saved interest. So our next question is, what interest rate do we multiply this by to figure out our avoidable interest? Well, the first interest we look at, we always go first to our construction loan. Because if we weren't constructing this building, we wouldn't have taken out a construction loan. So we use the interest rate of the construction loan, but only up to the amount of the construction loan. So we can take 2 million of this and multiply it by 
the rate of our construction loan, which is 8%. And once again, this formula here is just taking the total amount times the rate. And then we have to add up to our total weighted average expenditures. The amount we have that's above 2 million is 475,000. So there's our, our total that matches up there. What rate do we use for that? Well, we have to take the weighted average of all the other debt. Okay, so we don't include our construction loan. We've already used that 8% here. Why do we look at the weighted average of all the other debt? Essentially, if we hadn't gotten into this project, we would have, four, we would have had $475,000 that we could have used to pay down some of this debt. So we wouldn't have had to pay so much interest. So that's why we use the weighted average of these interest rates. So how do you calculate the weighted average? You simply take the principal times the interest rate. So that's going to be the interest for a year's period for each one of these notes. Now if the note is outstanding for less than a year, you would take it by the fraction of the year it was, it was outstanding. But I think our problem said all of these have been around all year. So we're going to have a full year's worth of interest. So then once you have the total amount of the note principal and the total amount of interest, if you divide the total interest by the total principal, that is going to give you your weighted average interest rate. So in this case, 9.4%. So that is what we're going to use here. So our total avoidable interest is therefore 204,650. Now we're not done with our calculations yet. The rules say that we can only capitalize, capitalize the lower of avoidable interest or actual interest. Okay, and actual interest is what we actually pay. So this number plus whatever we paid in our construction loan is actual interest. You can see that's way higher than our avoidable interest. And usually that's going to be the case. It's very rare that actual interest is going to be lower than avoidable interest, but you always have to check that out and make sure. So the last thing we need to do here is make the journal entry. Now let's assume we have already put all of this to interest expense. Okay, So this is telling us that 204000 of that does not need to go to interest expense. It gets capitalized, which means it becomes part of the building. So our journal entry here, we would increase our building by that 204650 And we would decrease our interest expense and this, again, this is assuming that we've already made the entries for interest expense earlier for the amounts up here and also for the amount we paid in our construction loan um, to capitalize it. Now, if we hadn't made the entry for this interest expense, we would be crediting cash for the total amount we paid for interest expense, and we would just divide up our debit between the building, 204, and then the rest of the interest expense that we calculated, including that for the construction loan and all of these, would go into a debit of interest expense. But if we've already recorded it, that's how we, we uh, calculate it there. Uh, so that is calculating capitalization of interest.